Hi, everybody. Welcome to Paired Fair Back to School Edition. My name is Risa Bennett. I'm the Advocates Lead for Paired and Go Guardian, and this is Paired 101. Today, we're going to go over the basics of getting started with Paired and we're going to focus primarily on the free features that Paired offers you. Today's session is going to talk about Paired for in person instruction. I'm going to teach you how to present a Paired in class how to build a Pear Deck, and I'm going to leave you with some help resources so that you can work on this on your own time and bring Pear Deck into your classroom this year. Pear Deck is on a mission to help teachers deliver powerful learning moments to every student every day, and we do that through our formative assessment and student engagement platform. Additionally, Pear Deck gives every student a voice and every teacher deeper insight into their students' learning. Unlike the traditional classroom that most of us grew up in with a single projector screen that we were all circled around, or if you're a little bit younger, perhaps you grew up in a one-to-one -one classroom, Pear Deck actually relies on three different views. The first one is the student view, and I should say that Pear Deck is best suited for one-to-one -one classrooms, or if you have a classroom set of devices, Pear Deck also works well for that. With Pear Deck student view, what is up on the projector screen is also mirrored on the student's device as well. It doesn't matter the brand of device, it doesn't matter the browser, as long as the students have access to Wi-Fi and the teacher has access to Wi-Fi, you can use Pear Deck in your classroom. Putting the information on the big screen into your students' devices allows students to be really in their native environment, which is holding a device in their hand, their face behind a screen, interacting with the content that is on their, on their device. But unlike the, tr the traditional projector view that just has the content that you're presenting to students, the Pear Deck projector view also allows you to project student answers anonymously on the big screen. This allows for students to participate in a way that is more comfortable. They feel less on the spot. They feel less embarrassed um, to be called out for the one B, maybe having the wrong answer or a different answer than their peers. But their secret sauce of Pear Deck is really our third view, and that is the teacher dashboard view. Now, I did tell you that this session is mostly going to be focused on Pear Deck's free, free features. The teacher dashboard is a premium feature. However, I want to give you a peek behind the curtain today at the powerful teacher dashboard and the way that it gives you insights into student learning. So let's jump in so that I can illustrate what I mean when I'm talking about the three views with our very first interactive question. The question that I have up on my screen right now is a multiple choice question. And even if you have not seen Pear Deck in action, you've probably seen what clickers look like. And in its most basic level, that's what a Pear Deck multiple choice question is. I'm showing you my projector screen right now, but I'm gonna to toggle over to the student view so that you can see that on the left side of the student screen is the question that I posed, and on the right side of the screen are my multiple choice options. Now I told you that the Pear Deck projector view had an elevated experience and by going down here to the lower right hand corner of my screen, I can click on show responses. And now I can see how many people know what Pear Deck is and what level their familiarity is. But you'll notice that I can't see anybody's names associated with responses. So even though the majority of people said that they use it and love it, there are folks here that know what it is but they haven't used it. And they don't have to feel bad that they aren't as advanced as the folks who use it and love it. Many of you that are new to Pear Deck probably learned about Pear Deck during the pandemic and found out that we were an essential tool for remote instruction. And while that is true, what you may not know is that Pear Deck was actually created years ago, long before remote instruction was the norm that it has been for the last year. And so as many of us are lucky enough to go back into physical classrooms, I wanna make sure that you understand how Pear Deck fits into the physical classroom environment. Teachers know that one of the biggest challenges that we face in the classroom is being able to hear from every student. In a traditional setting, you pose a question to your class, you can call on one or two raised hands if you are lucky enough to get one or two raised hands. And more often than not, this, it's the same hands being raised over and over again. If you call on the same student every time, you have no idea what the rest of the class knows or doesn't know. If you call on a hand that's not raised, you take the risk of 
A, asking a student who doesn't know the answer, or B, putting a student on the spot who is not comfortable answering in front of the class. And yet, you need to know what your students know. So with Pear Deck, any time you pose a question to, the, to your students through Pear Deck Interactive Questions, every student can answer. And using the teacher dashboard or the projector view, you can quickly see how many students are on track and which students need maybe a little bit more assistance. You know how to pace your lesson if you need to go a little faster or maybe back up and do a little bit of scaffolding. Our second interactive question is the text question. So both of these that I've shown you so far, the multiple choice and the text, are very straightforward kinds of questions that we're always posing in class, whether it is verbally or on paper. Again, this is all happening through your students' devices this time. Quickly, I'll show you the student view. Again, it's a split screen where the student can see the question right there in front of them, and to the right is the text box where they can type their response. If I go over here again to the projector view, and again, I'm gonna click on show responses, you see that students' answers have come in in real time. One thing to note, and I'm gonna go back to the student view now, you'll notice there's no submit button. That's intentional as it removes some of the friction that can happen in class if you have to wait for students to feel like they've finished their answers. Instead, you can actually see students as they're typing, see their answers coming through in real time. For you as the teacher, you know if you're giving enough processing time, and you can also see them working through their thoughts in real time. Our third interactive question is a drawing slide. This time on the student view, you can see that there is a drawing palette at the bottom. They can choose from a wide variety of colors. And down here at the bottom, you can, they can choose from different kinds of drawing tools. They can adjust the size of their drawing tool. And for students who maybe are less comfortable drawing, maybe they're not as abstract thinkers or creative as some of their classmates, there's also the option for them to choose text and actually stamp text onto their slide. I mentioned scaffolding a moment ago, and one of the things you may have noticed is that when we think about a multiple choice question, typically we think of a closed ended question. As we get into text options or even drawing, thinking can expand more and more and go deeper all the way into the abstract responses of a drawing slide. So when you're thinking about how to use these slide types effectively in class, think about it in ways that you can scaffold it or capture learning and understanding from students who might be on different levels. You may ask the same question a couple of different ways, once through multiple choice, once through text, um, so that you can capture students' depth of understanding as you go. Really quickly, let me show you what the, the projector responses look like here on a drawing slide. It might be more effective to show it this way. Now, I used to teach high school, and if I had had Pear Deck when I was a teacher, teaching high school, I might have been very hesitant to use the drawing slide if all the responses remained anonymous. Obviously, sometimes students take liberties with freedom and you have to be able to check that. So this is where I want to give you a little peek behind the curtain at what the teacher dashboard gives you in terms of uh, teacher controls. So again, right now, you're looking at the projector view, all answers are anonymous. I'm going to toggle over to a different tab, and this is my teacher dashboard view. You notice now next to each response is a student's name. As I said, I'm going to go into this more uh, in 201, but I just want to show you briefly that if I found that there was a student who was perhaps doing something inappropriate with the drawing slide, I could easily click the three dot menu here and hide that student's responses. Now, when I go to project their responses, that student's answers are not showing, so we don't have to be a distraction to the class. On the flip side, maybe you don't wanna be projecting all 30 responses at the same time. If you wanna show just a few answers at a time, maybe some exemplary responses, maybe some conflicting responses for classroom discussion, or even highlighting that there's a common misconception happening, you could star several of the responses like this. And now, when I go to project the responses, only the ones that I starred show. Again, this gives you a little bit more control on behavior management um, as you proceed through the lesson. 
Our next interactive question type is a number slide. And it's just like what it sounds like. Instead of entering text, a student is given the option to enter just a number. So again, this is sort of a closed ended question. Just estimate how many jelly beans are in the mason jar. Now, when I go to my projector view, and again, I'm gonna show my responses anonymously, I get this lovely box and whisker plot. And suddenly a very simple estimation question can launch us into a discussion about mean, median, mode, range. Perhaps I didn't quite get the answers that I was expecting. Maybe the range is a lot farther. Maybe I'm concerned about this kid who chose a thousand jelly beans while someone over here chose five. Maybe I need to follow up with a little bit of metacognition, but I wasn't expecting to have to go deeper on this. That's okay though, because I can actually add a new interactivity on the fly. So down again in the bottom right of my screen, I can click on the icon that says new prompt. With new prompt, I'm given several pages of pre-made questions. You'll notice here at the beginning, the first screen, there are questions from the beginning, during, or end of class. If I toggle to the next one, I have some more generic prompts for text, multiple choice, drawing, and so on. But for this purpose, because I want to build on my existing content, I'll go to the third option, use my current content, and I want to make this a text slide. So I'm gonna choose the text option here. It keeps the same imagery on the screen for the student, but it changes the interactivity. And so now verbally I can say to my class, okay, tell me how you came to decide on the number that you chose. And so this time students are able to unpack their thinking. So if I show responses on my new prompt that I added, well, it looks like nobody wants to tell me what they were thinking. But suffice to say, those responses would come in in real time and we could discuss, oh, look, I just didn't give enough wait time. Well, Mr. 1000, I'm not sure that was the answer I was looking for, but that's okay. Our next interactive question type is a draggable slide. The student view has these, these icons that sit off to the right. Again, this is the student view. You see their icons and they can use the legend over here to drag their icons to the correct part of the map. Now, you might be concerned that students, once they see other people's responses projected up on the screen, they may be tempted to change their answers so that they are not out of the norm. There's an option to control that. Here on the bottom, again, bottom right, you see the icon that says lock screens. This time, before I show responses, I can hit the lock screens button. Students see your teacher has locked the response for this slide. They can't drag their icons anymore. And now when I go to show responses with my screens locked, students can't give in to the peer pressure to change their answers and we can have a true discussion um, about any that people might have gotten wrong. Our last interactive question type is a web slide. And if you have ever tried to get 35 students to type in the same URL, you may know that you've lost minutes, maybe at this point, hours of your life trying to get them on the same page. With the Pear Deck web slide, you can actually embed any secure site into the Pear Deck slide, and students will stay on that website as long as you stay on the slide. So again, whatever information is on the slide is split to the left, and then over here to the right, the website that you embedded is browsable by the students. Let's say I wanna give my students set some expectations about how much time they have to browse. If I click and hold my lock screens button, I'm given three timer options. For this, I might choose three minutes. Now there's a counter that shows up on the projector view and over here on the student view, so the student knows how much time they have to browse. You can use the timer option on any of the interactive slide types. This is really great for wait time. It allows students to know how long they have to process before they're expected to move on. Just to recap, like I said, Pear Deck has six interactive slide types. They're text, multiple choice, number, website, drawing, and draggable. You'll notice there are stars next to the drawing and draggable. Again, although I did tell you that most of this session is going to be on the free features, 
I would have been remiss not to show you two of our most popular uh, slide types that are also part of our premium package, drawing and draggable. So now that you've seen what the in-class experience look like, looks like, I've shown you what it looks like from the teacher perspective and from the student perspective. Let's actually back up and I will show you how easy it is to create the interactivity that I showed you today. I'm gonna go over here and open up a slides presentation that I already created. You can create interactive Pear Deck presentations within Google Slides or within PowerPoint Online, depending on what platform your district operates in. For our purposes today, I'm going to show you how to build your presentation inside of Google Slides. The process for PowerPoint Online is very similar, uh, but I do want to tell you for sure that if it's PowerPoint Online, it, just, it does have to be the online version and not the desktop version. Right now, I'm inside of an existing uh, Google slide presentation, there's no interactivity on any of these slides. So once you're inside of a slides presentation, you can click on the add-ons menu because Pear Deck is a free add-on for Google slides. Once you click on add-ons, you'll come down here to get add-ons the first time. Hopefully Pear Deck shows up at the top of your list. Of course, I already have it installed on my computer, but uh, if you don't, you just choose install, give Google some permissions, and you close out of here. Now, when I go to my add-ons menu, I click on add-ons, and I see Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on. Here I can click open Pear Deck add-on. It'll open up the Pear Deck sidebar, and everything in the sidebar allows you to edit your existing slides or a new slide presentation in order to make it interactive. This is um, just a regular Google Slides presentation, the same as you probably have saved on your drive. The easiest way to get started with making your slides into a Pear Deck is by using our template library. You can access that by clicking this box here that says our template library. And you'll notice a whole array of different categories of templates that you can use in your classroom. To begin with, I recommend maybe dropping a bell ringer at the beginning of your, of your presentation or maybe an exit ticket at the end. For our purposes, I'm just gonna open up the beginning of lesson menu. You see that all of our templates come with text, imagery, and uh, interactivity already added to it. So let's say that I want my students to start off class by drawing on prior knowledge and reflecting on their learning from the day before. So I'm gonna click on this one. I see here that the interactivity is text. When I choose this, it creates a brand new slide in my presentation. It does not override any of my existing content. You see, it just drops right in. Like I said, these are all turnkey and ready to use, but if there's anything that you wanted to customize for your classroom, you can do that. It is just a Google slide. So I can edit the text, I can edit the image, I can even edit the interactivity on my template in order to make it appropriate for my class. So once you are comfortable using the templates, you might want to start adding interactivity to your own lessons or slides. And you can do that also from the sidebar. You see again, our six interactive question types are right here to the right. Let me go down to another slide. And let's say I wanna make this slide a text slide. All I would do is click on text and it shows me it's working, it's adding the interactivity. And when it's done thinking, it puts this little bar at the bottom of my slide, that's how I know it's become interactive. And it gives the student the prompt of the type of slide that it is. But let's say I actually change my mind and I don't want it to be a text slide, I want it to be a draggable slide. All I have to do is go over here, and again, this was a text slide, now I'll just click the draggable icon. It'll allow me to configure my draggables right here. So you may have noticed on my sample slide that there were some more fun shapes than just a dot. I can find those fun shapes by clicking into this menu. I can browse shapes, math symbols, numbers, really fun icons here. Obviously I need to choose the pair for this, for this slide. I'm gonna choose it, but I want my pair to be green. So to change the color of my icon, I'll click on the color box here. I'll choose green. And you'll notice that over here to the right, it's giving me a preview of what the icon looks like, the color and the size. 
So I can use this drag bar here to make my icons bigger or smaller. I can also add up to five draggable icons to any slide. And once I'm ready, I just hit update slide. And you'll see it has overwritten the text prompt and now it is a draggable slide instead. The last thing that you need to know about creating and presenting a, a Pear Deck lesson is that it is very important that you start the lesson with the Pear Deck button. If you've done all this work to make your lesson interactive, but you click the white present button, you will still just have a static Google Slides presentation. It's very important that when you're ready to launch your lesson, you do so using the green start lesson button. I'm, in, I'm going to click that right now. It's going to give me two options. I can either start it as a student paced activity or an instructor paced activity. If you're intrigued by what a student, act, student paced activity would look like, I invite you to join me for my Pear Deck 201 session a little bit later, where we will dive into how to use Pear Deck for asynchronous and remote instruction. But for our purposes today, I'm going to stay focused on instructor paced activity. I'll choose that option. and it launches my session. So automatically, it gives instructions for students to join on their own devices. All they have to do is open up a browser window on their device, go to joinpd.com and enter this six letter join code. It will prompt them to connect with their Google credentials if you are a Google Classroom. If you are presenting from PowerPoint online and you're in Office 365 school, it'll prompt students to connect with their Office 365 credentials, or you can actually change your settings for it to, to allow students to join anonymously as well. Other options are to push the invite through Google Classroom with our Google Classroom integration, or you can generate a direct link for students to drop into an LMS or send via email wherever you want students to go to access the lesson. Again, just to recap, it's very easy to install the add-on for Google Slides. Just go to your add-ons menu. Once you've launched the sidebar, you can add your interactivity. And again, just be sure to present lesson with the green button and not the white one. Everything that we've talked about so far requires some pre-planning, obviously adding interactivity to existing lessons, planning out a lesson. Um, but we know that sometimes learning happens spontaneously, whether you just need to do a quick emotional check, it seems like maybe your class is off, but you didn't have a Pear Deck planned, or maybe you did an experiment and you wanna get some quick feedback from your students, or maybe very soon we will be going on field trips again and you want to capture some of your students learnings on the fly maybe on a field trip enter pear deck pop-up activities pop-up activities will look familiar to you because they use the same prompts that i showed you in the new prompt format all you have to do is go to app.pairdeck.com home and here in the top right you'll see the pop-up activities icon I'll click here to choose a prompt. Again, like I said, these prompts should look familiar to you as I showed them to you during our, uh, our lesson a little bit ago. So you can choose from some bell ringer options, maybe a stress check, a KWL, or maybe there's a more general question that you wanna ask, you can choose your prompt. I want to do a, a, excuse me, a quick stress check. I noticed my students were a little bit off today and it launches just the same as a regular Pear Deck presentation. The students join the same way that I just showed you, but instead of a whole presentation, it just has the one slide that you chose. You can quickly capture that feedback in real time. I want to give you a few activities that you can do on your own to help you have sort of a guided practice. Um, you can come back to these later. You can screenshot this list right now. But again, the first thing that you want to do is launch the add-on for Google Slides. Then you want to add your interactivity. Your options are to do that with templates, or you can add um, questions to new slides or existing ones. And remember that you can also edit any interactivity that you add. I just showed you your Pear Deck home. You can go there to view any live sessions that you launch with Pear Deck. Um, you can also export student responses 
there as well for a quick check after class. If you're interested in all the ways that you can review student responses after class, again, I encourage you to join my 201 session a little bit later where we'll really dive into how you can extend your lesson with Pear Deck tools. And really the best way to practice Pear Deck is with other people because you're going to be using it with a class. So maybe you might want to get together with some of your colleagues and practice being teacher and student ed so that you can see what all the different views look like um, in the classroom. If you're feeling very bold, I have a few other post-training challenges for you to think about as well. Again, you can come back to these later or you might screenshot this screen right now so that you have a few more activities to help get some practice before school starts up again. I highly recommend starting with a template or two. Maybe just drop one at the beginning or end of your set of your existing lesson so you get comfortable driving um, the Pear Deck and students get comfortable joining the lesson and then doing just a bit of interactivity at the beginning and end. I know this is a lot of information to cover quickly in such a short period of time. So I just want you to know that we have lots of helpful resources that you can access on demand at any time. We have a very extensive gallery of help videos. You can go to pairdeck.com slash help dash videos. We have short two to four minute videos on all the different features that Pear Deck offers. Whether you are a PowerPoint online user or a Google Slides user, we have them tailored to both use cases. So feel free to check those out. We also have a Pear Deck knowledge base. You can go to help.pairdeck.com. You can search any topic you need to know about Pear Deck and get the full explanation of how to do it. Or if you have a specific question or you run into any trouble, I encourage you to send us a note at help at pairdeck.com. Our support team is standing by, always ready to help you with anything that you might need. In addition to our support options, we're also on social media. You'll find us very active on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can also find even more help videos and pre-recorded webinars on our YouTube channel, or if you're a LinkedIn person, you can find us there too. I highly recommend you stay connected to us on social media as our back to school season is going to have tons of giveaways and even more helpful resources for you to have a great year back in the classroom. And just a quick preview of what you can expect if you wanna join our Pear Deck 201 session. We're gonna do a deep dive into all of Pear Deck premium features, including a deeper dive into the teacher dashboard, which you saw briefly today. You'll also find out about our shared teacher dashboard. You'll learn more about student pace mode and how to use Pear Deck for asynchronous or remote instruction. We also have an add audio feature, a teacher feedback feature, an immersive reader integration, a reflect and review function for reviewing student work after class, and so much more. I really hope you'll join us for that session as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know that this is going to be a big year for us and we are so excited to be supporting you as you return to in-person instruction with Pear Deck. Thanks everyone.